Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, introduction to Google Earth webinar. My name is Dave Reed and I'm a freelance web developer and owner of Reed Consulting. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, during the next half hour or so, I will quickly give you a rundown of how you can best utilize the Google Earth software. Google Earth began in 2005 and has since seen a number of upgrades and is now in its seventh version. After showing you how to install and start the program, I'll then show you how to navigate the viewfinder and then run through some of the menu options. This should give you a good introduction on how to get around in Google Earth, and in future webinars I'll show you how to actually create content. Alright, let's start with the installation of the software. Uh, in order to install Google Earth, we first need to download it. To do so, open your web browser of choice and enter www.earth.google.com into the browser's URL search bar and press enter. Once the web page is open, click on the download Google Earth button in the upper right hand of the screen to start the download. Once the download is complete, you should look in your downloads folder to find the Google Earth setup file. Double click on this to install the software. Uh, installation may take a few minutes, but once it's complete, you can open it by clicking on the start menu. Uh, searching for Google Earth and then clicking on the icon. Once Google Earth loads, it should look something like this. Uh, these startup tips here uh, show some of the most interesting features of the program and are really handy for first timers. But for our purposes, let's go ahead and close them and start with the basics. All right, so here we are in, in the Google Earth program, and uh, we're going to start with the most fundamental tool, which is the navigation features, which are up here in the upper right. Uh, these allow us to view the Earth from any angle and location. We'll start using the zoom feature, uh, which is this little slider at the bottom. By dragging this up and down, we can start to get a closer look at the Earth. You can also use uh, the mouse button to zoom by double clicking or right clicking the mouse and moving up or down. All right. Just above the zoom slider is a feature that allows you to move the view from side to side and up and down. This little pan function here. Simply holding the right mouse button and dragging the cursor also works to do this. Finally, we can adjust the angle and orientation of our viewpoint using the top two components of the navigator tool. The inner circle up here controls the angle. And the outer one rotates the direction with the little n up here always pointing north. Holding down the shift key while left clicking the mouse and moving it around also does this. Alright, now that we've done some navigating, it's time we look at some of the other features that Google Earth has to offer. The top menu of the program, located up here, seems pretty basic at first, but actually contains quite a few features. Let's begin by looking at the file menu. Here we have your basic open, save, email, and print functions found in most programs these days. When it comes to opening files, You'll find that Google does a great job uh, with a number of different file types, but it works best with its native .kml and .kmz files, which you'll see here. Here's an example of a mountain bike ride that I plotted out and saved as slickrock.kmz. You'll notice that as the file is opened, the viewfinder automatically zooms and moves to its location. Google Earth also allows you to open image files such as .jpg, .bmp, .tiff, etc., as well as uh, GPS files and other mapping uh, programs such as .gpx, .loc, and .mps.
Now you'll notice that once a file is open, it gets placed in this temporary places folder here. To make sure that you can see these files later, you'll want to highlight the file and go to File Save and then click Save to My Places. This will bring it into the My Places folder for later viewing. Let's see. File and then Save, Save to My Places. Now you'll see it's in this My Places folder. You can also save an individual file to your computer by clicking or highlighting the file, clicking File, Save, and Save Place As. This allows you to save it to your computer. All right. The third feature in the Save uh, menu is Save My Places. This basically backs up the entire My Places folder. Uh, and as you start to create data, it's important to use this option regularly, as the program can sometimes crash and you could lose all of your work. The final save option is to create a snapshot of the current view as an image file using the save image function. This is useful if you want to simply showcase what you're looking at without actually having to open Google Earth. You'll notice that it saves as a .jpg, uh, so that's just your basic image folder, image file. All right. Next up on the main menu, we have uh, a list of the edit functions, which really become useful once you start creating content and want to manipulate it. It's something we'll certainly dive into during future webinars. But for now, let's move on to the view settings. Here we have a number of options that allow us to ju adjust what we're looking at. By default, the program should start with both the tool and sidebar present, uh, the sidebars present. But if we want to get an even bigger look at the screen, we can turn these off and even go into full screen mode. Let's see. There we go. But for now, we'll just keep it uh, with both showing. All right, the toolbar along the top of the screen up here contains a number of icons that can be used to create content which we'll get into during future webinars. The sidebar along the left hand of the screen here is where the search, places, and layers functions reside. Let's start by taking a look at the search function. Essentially this is where you can quickly type in the name of anywhere on the planet that you want to see and simply press search to go there. Just like opening a file, the viewfinder should automatically move to this location. The places option, oops, sorry, uh, let's see. the places portion of the sidebar is where all your content is stored, either in the my places or temporary files. The layers menu down here at the bottom, which we'll move up a little, lets you show a number of features and place marks within your current view. These include borders and labels, places, photos, roads, 3D buildings, the ocean, the weather, a gallery, global awareness, and more. Turning all of these on can certainly show you a whole lot about what's within the area you're looking at, but can also get quite crowded. So it's best to keep them sort of limited. Uh, so I turn on a few and then you'll start to see uh, the viewfinder get populated with the little place marks. Returning now to the view menu, we also have the option to turn off the navigation functions by using this show navigation feature. But I'd recommend only doing so if you already know how to use the mouse to navigate really well. All right. Now moving to the status bar. Uh, this is where uh, you have basically, let's see, we'll turn off the tour guide for now. So the status bar is this bar down here at the bottom and it shows you real-time data about where your uh, pointer is on the map. Uh, so it shows your coordinates here, your elevation at the ground here, and then what Google calls the eye altitude, which is essentially what, uh, what altitude you're currently viewing from. Also, in the very lower right, we have this little circle here, uh, and that's basically uh, the 
refresh uh, circle, which if we move the viewpoint location, uh, the bar should spin until the imagery comes into focus. This basically just tells you when the program's done loading the imagery. All right, next up in the view menu, we have a grid feature, which basically overlays a grid of coordinates on the map. We also have an overview map, which places a small world map in the lower right-hand corner of the screen with crosshairs pointed at your current location. The scale legend is in the lower left here and shows the current scale to the map. All right. Next we have the tour guide which provides a list of worthwhile features to check out that are within proximity of where you're currently looking at. We'll go ahead and choose Red Rocks Amphitheater and it'll bring us right there. All right. In addition to these viewing tools, we can also choose to turn on or off the atmosphere, the sun, historical imagery, and water surfaces. Next we have a feature that is often overlooked by users of Google Earth, and that is the, the ability to check out not only the Earth, but the sky, Mars, and the Moon. Under this Explore section here, we'll see these different options. So if we pull up the Moon, basically reloads the program with the imagery from the Moon. All right. The final option under the View menu is to make this my start location. This is a handy feature that allows you to make what you're currently looking at into the one which pops up when you first start the program. So if we want every time Google Earth loads to load on Wyoming, say, we could set that using that feature. All right. Moving now to the Tools menu, we'll see a number of handy features. The first of these is the ruler, which lets us calculate either distance between two points as a line, or between more than two points as a path. And then you'll see the distance uh, between the points mapped out here in this window. Next under Tools, we have the GPS function, which can be used to import data from a number of handheld GPS devices. So say you had a, Mar uh, a Garmin or a Magellan GPS handheld device, uh, you could use this tool to import it, uh, those points straight into Google Earth. All right, the flight simulator is a little game that Google made up uh, that lets you explore the Earth as if you were in, a, in an airplane, basically. Uh, now we've come to the options portion of the toolbar, which uh, gives us even more preferences on how we want the program to look and run. Because there are so many of these features, I'm only going to show you a few of the more important ones and let you try out the rest at your leisure. Also, you can always revert to the program's default settings by pressing this Restore Defaults button here. It's a handy thing if you ever uh, get sort of lost in the, the fray of all these features. But let's start with the General tab, which contains some of the most generic options for the program. Uh, the three display checkboxes up here allow you to choose whether or not to display the tooltips, open links in a separate bar in a separate browser, or show the highlights on buildings. Within the language settings, you can choose to set the text of the program to be in a number of different languages. See a whole list here. All right, you can also choose which email program to, to use by default when sending an email. And let's see, and whether or not to show the startup tips when the program starts. All right, now under this navigation tab, we can adjust the zoom and pan speeds to be either faster or slower, here and here. And additionally, we can tell the program whether or not to tilt the view back to being flush with the ground while zooming. 
Within the cache features, you can set the amount of memory that your computer devotes towards running Google Earth. Be sure to set these to within the specifications of your computer, otherwise you might crash it. Many of the options within this 3D view tab can be left as is, but you might want to try and experiment with them if the program is running slowly on your computer. For example, you can set the texture colors to 16-bit up here and the anisotropic filtering to off to try and speed up the program's performance. Under these terrain options, we can make the mountains, valleys, and buildings stand out by increasing the elevation exaggeration value, or decreasing it, to make them more subtle. So for example, we can zoom in on some mountains here in Wyoming. And then go back to the options. And if we increase this, it should make the mountains bigger. Yep, much bigger. <laughs> and then if we decrease them, it makes them smaller. But we'll go ahead and go back to the default for now. All right, we've also got the ability to make uh, our overview map larger or smaller, which is the last feature in this 3D view. Uh, essentially, making it larger will make this overview map in the lower right bigger, and then the zoom relation can make it uh, a little more close to where you're currently looking. All right, so that should do it for our options. Next up, we have the Help menu, which allows you to not only track down the answers to your questions through Google's help resources, but also lets you see a complete list of the keyboard shortcuts for the program. Here you can also check out the program's release notes, license, privacy, about documents, etc. And then you can also join in the discussion uh, on a Google Earth community forum, which will open in a browser uh, and basically show you a number of uh, uh, forum topics that discuss the Google Earth ongoings. Okay, uh, that's it for the presentation portion of the webinar. I hope you all enjoyed learning about some of the features that Google Earth has to offer. Uh, now, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for coming. So the first question is, uh, what version of Google Earth am I running? Uh, and that one is uh, it's version 7, uh, which I think has a number of these features added in, particularly this tour guide. I've also got a question uh, that says, how do I change the coordinate types within the status bar? That's a good one. We'll see. Uh, I'll show you how to do that by going to Tools, Options. And then you can set the, uh, the coordinate type here in this show lat long. Uh, so you can set it to decimal degrees, degrees, minutes, and seconds, degrees, decimal minutes, or UTMs as well. And then if we go to UTMs, we'll see that in our bar down here, there are UTMs. All right. I've got another one that says, uh, how can anyone calculate the area in Google Earth? So that's a good, good question, uh, and I think it's something that we can get into future webinars. Thanks again for coming, everyone. Uh, take care.